Hello YouTube and welcome to another video on House of Duel. As always, I'm glad to have you and happy Halloween weekend to everyone out there. I hope you're having a fun, good time. And uh, yeah, today we're going to be installing AJE caster camera plates on our 79 Project Eagle Brews back here. So we're getting the caster camera plates installed and we're going to slap in the coilovers in this video as well. So we're going to get some of the front end suspension um, mocked up. But first we're going to install the caster camera plates. These are unique. They're a little bit different. Let's get straight to what makes AJE caster camera plates here different from everybody else's. So as always, I'd like to give everybody just a quick update on what has changed on our 79 EcoBoost Coupe here. And this time, nothing. Uh, nothing has changed on it. We did the Chimer video in the last video, and we did the K-Member install on the last video as well. So got the AJA K-Member and A-Arms mocked up and mounted, so it looks really good. We got the coilovers laying here, ready to go. And I've got some SC95 spindles back here that I've torn down uh, this morning just so we can get a good mock-up. Uh, with these guys as well. So the SN95 spindles are here. They're ready to rock. We'll be able to slap these on to the coilovers and to the lower A-arms. See how everything looks. And uh, otherwise, nothing else has changed. Yeah, enough talking. To the install. Okay, this is AJE's uh, caster camber plate here. And you can see right off the bat, these are a, a very unique and different design. Um, this is how they come. This is, you'll get one for each side, of course. This is just one side I'm showing you. Uh, but these have the spherical bearing bushings inside of here. So the spherical bearings is for, you know, specifically for coilovers here. So what makes these unique from everyone else's is that they really put a lot of engineering to put the load on the shock tower versus on the caster camber plate itself. Most caster camber plates, you see bolts on top of here with your adjustments sliding on the top, of course, you know, you've got your, your plate or your, your aluminum, you know, plates that go on top of here. And then your adjustment for your casting camera is just by loosening a bolt and sliding around like this. The problem is, is whenever you've got load coming down the wheel, especially if you're in a drag racing environment and maybe you're popping wheelies, as you're coming down in it, you're putting on that load just on the bolt holes here, not on the whole shock tower itself. AJE has solved that problem by moving this entire plate assembly to the bottom of the shock tower. This top plate here will actually go over the top. Okay, so your plate will actually go on top like so. And then this gets put on the bottom of it like this. And when you tighten it down, of course, it all sandwiches together. Now, one good thing about this, I think, is that it hides it and you don't have that big bulky caster camber look coming off the top of your car. So it looks really clean and smooth, but the idea behind this is it puts all your forces up on the bottom of the shock tower here, okay? So all the force from the spring is going against the shock tower and putting the forces back into the car where it should be and not on the caster camber plates themselves and just through the bolt holes. So this plate really essentially is only to hide the holes and to cover it up. Now you must be wondering why the holes aren't lining up. Guys, I'm gonna tell you right off the bat, this kit requires you to drill new holes into your shock towers. And a lot of you are gonna be turned off by that, but um, hear me out. The reason why they do that, actually there's a few reasons, but one of the main reasons is so that it fits a whole bunch of different types of you know, years of Fox body Mustangs, but also because this stays stationary, whereas the other ones, you know, your adjustments are gonna be made with the plate here sliding into the holes you've got here. This stays stationary. What that means is the engineering and design behind this is completely different and unique than any other caster camera plate I've installed. So this is gonna be quite a new and different experience for me. But uh, yeah, so this goes on top. Your load is being put, again, on the bottom of the shock tower like this through your spherical bearing. Now, keep note here that this is gonna point down the bearing itself points down the car because you've got a snap ring here. Now, if you read reviews, I've read a lot of reviews on people who love and some people don't necessarily like this design. I almost guarantee you they're probably installing it wrong. And the reason why I say that is because they've mentioned the snap bearing has broken on it before and they've replaced these with different, different brands. But here's the deal, the snap bearing really can't break if you install these um, correctly. I almost guarantee you the people who are doing this are probably putting these up top like you would on a more traditional uh, caster camera plate design when you do that your load is actually now being pressed into here you've got these you've got these inserts that go on the top and bottom this is where your this is where your coilover shaft will ride on right through here but now think about it if you've got this pointed up like this the load 
is going right up onto this bearing being transferred to the snap ring in here. And if that snap ring pops out, you know, you're going to ruin your bearing and have a lot of extra, you know, excessive play. So most likely they're installing them wrong. Now I do say this, um, AJE has a very minimal instruction, um, but I did get the pleasure to talk to a gentleman there in AJE named Jim, um, who spent a good 30, 45 minutes in, um, talking to me about the design behind these um, and how beneficial they are. So let's talk really quick just about how these are set. If you notice, whenever these are installed like this, you don't have your standard, you know, caster and camber, okay? Let's talk real quick about what caster and camber is so we can talk about how these eccentrics work. These are adjustable by spinning. This is a cam eccentric, and your caster and camber is actually adjusted by rotating this plate, okay? See how it moves it in and out and forward and aft, okay? So that's completely unique also as well. All right, so imagine if you will, there's a, a wheel right here. So remember you got three different adjustments. So you can imagine the tire right here. You got three adjustments that sets your, your alignment here in the front of your car. You've got your toe, which is gonna be your tire, whether or not it's pointing in or out. So you got, you know, toe in would mean this tire will be pointed inwards. Toe out would mean this tire will be pointing out like this. Your toe is basically how much your, your, the front Imagine the tire being pointed in or pointed out. So you know caster camera now this is your caster camera is going to be all adjusted from your caster camera plate So that's the name of it, right? That's why they call them caster camera plates because your caster and camera is adjusted from the plates See see how easy it is. So it's pretty easy to think about a uh, caster caster is simply if you can imagine Your coilover or your strut here is how much it's leaned forward and how much it's leaned backwards the caster is going to help your car in track straight okay so now aje says that most of the caster is already pre-engineered into the plate itself however it is slightly adjustable one thing that is adjustable with the eccentric here is going to be your your camber now camber is going to be how much your wheel is pointed this way out towards the top or in towards the fender so negative negative camber is going to be if your top of your wheel is pointed in towards the fender and the back of the wheel if you want if you imagine it's slanted out like this so positive camber would be the top of the wheel is now pointed out towards the fender like this. So your camber is adjustments of your tire like this, okay? Caster is how much of the angle of your strut is leaning forward or leaning backwards. And then your toe is gonna be, you know, toe in and toe out, how much the wheel is like this. So with their design, even though you don't necessarily get separate caster um, and camber adjustments, what you get is an eccentric that rotates like you see here and this will actually adjust your caster and camber but mostly will be adjusting uh, your, your camber angles with the rotation the radius here i asked them that if they had any issues you know with steering places or with um any shops you know aligning their car and being confused by this dying absolutely not um they should have no problem getting this car into adjustment now one thing to, to notice here is that the way these are set like i said they already have preset caster um, but they're also apparently, and I'm not an engineer, but this, their design and the location of the caster camera plates is also going to help with steering axis inclination. Okay. So again, look up inclination. There's a whole thing about the angle of, you know, your scrub and where your tire is, but apparently this is going to help it out a little bit. All right, let's just take a quick second to look at how these are adjusted and where to adjust these camera centric. So let's just imagine that this is the passenger side caster camera plate, okay? So this is the front of the car. Okay, so that's the front this way, and the outside of the car is gonna be over here. Okay, so if you imagine this base circle, so now this is the, the firewall, let's just say this is firewall. Okay, so the firewall is back here. So if you imagine this is like a clock face, you've got your 12 o'clock position here, six, uh, they see you've got your three, and you've got your nine. AJE says that 90% of your camber adjustment is gonna come between a 90 degree angle, roughly around the 10 and two position. So 10 o'clock and two o'clock is gonna create a 90 degree angle about right here. So it's this area right here, the most of your camber angle is gonna need adjusted. So that being said, it's a good starting point to go ahead and Put this basically towards the back of the firewall. I'm gonna go ahead and install mine around the two o'clock position here, just like so. And that ought to get the alignment shot pretty close for your alignment. And also get your car to track straight to get it there. All right, so AJE's instructions, I'm not gonna lie, are pretty vague. It's just a simple set of instructions that says line these up over the hole, 
mark and drill seven sixteenths um, holes in your shock tower both down and then do it on the other side now I want to make sure that these are exactly center from both sides AGE recommends taking these plates they're identical there's no left and right okay so they're identical um, but they recommend taking this plate and taking this angle here and facing it towards the firewall in the engine okay so that's what we're gonna do on this side now I played with this side a little bit and making sure that this lip right here is flush up against the caster camera plate and the shock tower lip right here make sure these are flush up against each other I don't know if you can see this right here making sure this is perfectly flush right here that gives me the most meat to drill and tap into okay so then I was like okay so I got this side what we're gonna do is get a C clamp down we'll clamp this down make sure this is flush make sure this is about as center as we can get it around the hole here and then we'll drill and tap now I want to make sure this side matches the opposite side if you look at Ford's design notice how the caster cambers <laughs> notice how the, the mounting holes are the same except mirrored okay so it's reversed on the passenger side. Now, I believe Ford did this probably because they wanted to use the same parts on both sides, um, except that, that side would, to make up for the left and right differences, it just rotated 180 degrees. So, what I wanted to do is go test fit this side with the same angle and see how it fits. I'm thinking we may be better off taking that side and simply rotating it like this, okay? But let's check it out. So, again, they want the taper to go towards the inside. So that's how we're going to place it on the driver's side. On the passenger side, however, if I take the same angle and place it towards the back of the car and towards the firewall like this, and I line up the same hole where I, as I did over there, which is lining up this back side right here, what I found out was I'm actually into the factory holes here just barely. But I don't like that because now you're going to be drilling into a you know an area that is already cut. So I didn't like that, I didn't have a lot of meat there. So if I slid it now to make up for the difference, that worked, however, now, let's just say we line up this side. Well, now I've got a little bit of daylight right here. I don't know if you can see that right there. I got a little bit of daylight showing from this hole and a little bit of daylight showing on this side from this hole as well. So this plate, because the taper is not actually covering up both sides of the factory holes like it should be. So I went ahead and called AJE and just asked him, hey man, do you guys recommend flipping it normally on these caster camera plates they'll be the same from left and right and just simply on the passenger side it's rotated and flipped so I do it on this side and yeah sure, sure enough now I've got a lot more room in fact since I'm doing it opposite instead of lining the front of it we would line the back of it like this and then now I've got the same meat to drill into from these sides and this side and the plate covers up the holes nice and even so hopefully that makes sense so we'll align the plate back to the back of this piece right here versus aligning it to the front like we did on that side. So I hope that makes sense. This is the way I chose to do it because this is the way that I found out that I fits my shock towers you know, the best and gets it away from these holes is by aligning this one flush to the front of the hole and then taking this one over to the passenger side and aligning it with a taper flipped and then now lining it to the back of this hole. So again, I'm doing the same technique. I'm just mirroring it 180 degrees on the passenger side like they would from the factory. Hopefully that gets me the closest, you know, measurement wise from both sides to make sure they're identical. So I went ahead and called AG, talked to him about this. Actually, I talked to Jim about it over a text message. Um, he was super helpful and said, you know what? Yes, in fact, I usually install the passenger side flip. So even though their instructions aren't totally clear, I'm here to help you. If you have their kit, this is what I'm going to be doing. Um, we'll see how it works out for me. You can let me be the test guinea pig, but I think it's going to work out just fine. And I think it's going to work out perfect. So let's get to installing these, man. All right, starting on here on the passenger side, might as well since I'm over here, right? Like I said, I'm going to go ahead and line this up. What I want to do is just square this up along the edge here, square it up kind of along the edge right here, and uh, we're going to use a C-clamp and kind of just hold it in place. All right, so again, what I want to make sure here is that we've got a nice edge against here. I want to make sure this is, you know, equal amounts of paint here from the hole. These holes from the factory are not perfectly round. Um, and then we're gonna mark and drill these. Now, one of the reasons why AJE mentions 
that these are that, that just moved by the way one of the reasons why you have to drill and tap these um aj reminds me that listen all these shock tower mounting hole locations are different between your different fox bodies okay the mustangs are different maybe from the fairmonts um and so on between the years um, they were a little bit different as well so again making your own holes and drilling and tapping ensures that you can use these on all fox body platforms and again it keeps the uh the design so that you can put this on the bottom and spread the load of all the shock and all the spring onto the bottom of the shock tower there they are as far as i know the only people who have a design that puts this kind of plate directly on the bottom of the shock tower So we got four 716 holes drilled. Looks like our holes are perfect here. All right. I always, always love when that works out. You don't have to wallow out hole, right? Especially on something like, <laughs> like your caster camera plates. All right, now we're just gonna take our piece, make sure it's in the cam. Make sure you got your two wide uh, bolt holes over here towards the back of this plate and we will just hand snug this down. Now, as far as the alignment goes, like I said, we're gonna put this right towards the center. So when this is on the car, this is how it'll actually be aligned. It'll be aligned with a half inch. See, then you can rotate it, which is really kind of cool. All you gotta do is loosen up all four of these and adjust your alignment this way. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go put these both towards the back bolt. Again, just within that 90 degree sweep, we're gonna point it towards this just to get us started, and then we'll torque it down. That easy, guys. Boom. A 9 16th. Man, that is beefy. That is not going anywhere. Cool. Now we're just going to repeat on the other side. All right, now that they're in, you can really have a good understanding on how beefy these are and how they work. So we've got both sides in. Um, they are exact mirrors on how they're installed. The holes line up perfectly good. But look up in there. Look at that. So see, now you've got all that weight transfer going to the plates on top of your shock tires, but most importantly, at least also as important, equally as important is that these look good because they're not sticking up. I love the flush look. You don't have that, that big old hunk of a caster camera plate sticking up. And um, yeah, I'm happy with those. Guys, it's easy to install, okay? If you can drill holes in metal, you can install these. They look good. All right, I couldn't help myself. I had to go ahead and bolt up loosely a coil over just so I can get a look at it. It's awesome sauce, man. It's so freaking cool. Check it out. It's loose, it's not tight up there, but man, this thing is awesome. And I cannot wait to finish up the video. So hey, you're gonna wait till next video to do the actual coilover. And so we'll go over the coilovers, we'll go over what they are, the components of them, and have a separate video just on the coilover install. Now make sure you know that these caster camera plates are for specific to coilovers. They have caster camera plates that are for your stock setup um, because they have a different um, bearing. These have the spherical bearings and it for coilovers. So just make note that mine are specific to a coilover setup, but this is awesome. It's gonna look incredible. I'm excited. So hey, finishing it up this time, wrapping it up, get ready for a Halloween party. It's gonna be awesome. Stay tuned for the actual, yes, we bolted it on, but wait for the actual coilover install video coming up next. Hey, listen, 
that's a wrap. I hope you guys have a great weekend. Hope you guys have a great Halloween. We're getting ready for a big block party right now, so I gotta roll out the smoker and get all that stuff ready. Listen, this was super easy to install. It didn't take me maybe but a couple hours um, to do the whole thing. Most of it was just talking about it and getting it ready for you guys. But otherwise, the actual install itself, I say a couple hours, not even. Like seriously, I had drill problems, battery problems, bit, you know, whatever. 30 minutes, you can easily install this on both sides. Easy peasy. But guys, that's it. Hey, make sure to follow me on Instagram to get little updates and snippets of stuff that I'm putting out here before I put it out on YouTube. That's kind of cool. Stay tuned for the install video on the coilovers. And also go to housedoula.com. It is a one spot location for all my videos, for all the install videos, and for also, and also for all the content I put up on uh, my Facebook page there as well as my Instagram feed. So it's all kind of one spot and also a little place where you can go get yourself how to do the swag if you want to support the channel. That's it. Hey guys, we'll talk to you next time, man. Take care. Keep working on those box bodies. See you next time.